The relationships in Fruits Basket are so good, whether it's the more toxic ones like Shigure and Akito, the ones that kind of help overcome trauma such as our girl Toru as well as Kyo. But there's certain ones that uh, I had a good feeling about, and I figured it would go this direction, but I was waiting for an episode like this. Some footprints in the snow between someone like Yuki and Machi. They just felt like they were kind of two peas in the same pod, but they just needed something to really push them there fully, and I think this episode delivered that. I honestly feel like this might be my personal favorite relationship that doesn't give me red flags. Like, the whole dilemma with Shigar and Okta last week I think is the most fascinating, but in terms of the one that makes me feel the best, these two right here. I think one of the more curious aspects about Fruits Basket that I don't really think about too much until she's on screen is Machi. She's clearly someone who's troubled. And when they were exploring things like how she, after like there's this little family meeting here, she was just walking in the snow in circles, trampling over footsteps that she made. It's like, why would she do that? Like, what's the she bored? Is she trying to make a statement? And throughout the episode, really just watching and hearing from her perspective. I mean, Rumors being spread that she tried to kill her brother, that's why she was thrown out of her home, and then you have characters like Kakaru say, you know, that's probably not too far off from the truth, but we'd have to ask her to find out. And a character like Yugi and her, who very much have been growing closer and closer, I think this was definitely the make it or break it. Would they be together, or would this be something to push them apart? And without a doubt, this feels like the moment to bring them together, and had the phone not gone off, I think we would have saw a kiss for sure. Probably the funniest thing in this show to me, when that phone went off and he was freaking out, and he was like, oh shit, were you guys about to kiss? I legit was bursting out laughing. That was without a doubt the funniest moment in Fruits Basket for me, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I think the idea that, just the simple idea that she was raised to be perfect, and even her parents were saying, you know, I guess grades aren't all it is, and when she would throw it in her face, she'd be like, oh, you know, maybe it is my fault for raising you wrong. She had no hatred for the brother, she had no hatred for anything. It was a cool night. She tried putting a blanket on, and they made their own story that this is a way for us to get rid of the troubled child that we don't like you tried to kill your own brother to see why she hates perfection and why she was so hostile towards yuki for so long it really does paint a different picture we remember pretty much ever since their first interaction she's very daggerized towards yuki because yuki is fond over as a perfect prince but clearly she's one of the only characters who recognizes that his smile is without a doubt fake towards many of these situations and to see how similar yet different they are they really do feel like two broken halves of two different hearts but somehow they collect together and form a new heart that just it may not be picture perfect no scars attached but to them they don't need someone like that they need someone to you know, understand their pain and accept it at face value. And the simple moment where after that beautiful scene, they're in just like they're debating stuff about their school, right? There is a new box of chalk and previously she broke it because she hates things that are perfect. And Yuki, as he's discussing, reaches over and snaps one of the pieces of chalk so she wouldn't be upset. It's the little things in a relationship that will truly make it just seem so perfect as if you understand your partner on a perfect level. And to me, that's exactly what it is. To have her finally for the first time break down and cry and to have someone just say, you know, you're amazing and actually compliment her not like force out information that clearly she wants to keep hidden, just accepting that there's nothing wrong with you and the idea of promising that when there's snow on the ground we'll, we'll make footprints together. And the fact that there was no snow afterwards and she's actually hopeful for it. The simple idea from chalk to snow to expectations, perfection to her is the most horrifying thing because she never could be perfect and it was always the cruelty that came after. To see that build up, the conversation and thinking back towards every moment with these two characters, it's so amazing to see how far they've come and I truly feel like they're absolutely perfect together. It feels like that's the type of connection similar to that of like someone like Kyo and Toru. They just feel like they connect like a magnet and nothing can truly separate them. Without a doubt, the final season is living up to its name. It feels like the finale. It feels like all these stories are starting to click more and more and reach a satisfying conclusion. One of the things that I really took away from this episode appreciating is how there's two instances where characters didn't get together and heartbreak is a part of graduation and growing up. The idea of, you know, a character who I remember despising 
actually, you know, ending in a pretty satisfying way where she doesn't want Yuki to give the feelings back if he doesn't have them. She just wants to be able to tell Yuki how much he meant to her. That when he thanks her, she stops him short so he doesn't break her heart. Just saying, I hope you find happiness, and if you've already found happiness, I hope it gets better even from there for you. And the idea that the person who liked her, you know, he did the same thing, saying like, you know, obviously, because that's just how it is. I think too many times people in general, especially anime, manga, light novel writers, they say if a character feels a certain way, the person they feel that towards has to give it back to them. That ain't life. It's because you're in love with someone, or you think you're in love with someone, it doesn't mean they have to give it back. It has to be a two-way street. The fact that two characters essentially have their hearts broken, but were able to leave school with a smile, says to me that, once again, this is why an author who understands character writing and how to make realistic situations in the face of Zodiac curses and those who make things that are wish fulfillment. And Fruits Basket is anything but that. Sometimes characters get what they want, sometimes they get their heart broken. And most of them have shitty parents by the looks of it. It's just so great to see all those moments, and honestly, the only thing that kind of was, like, weird to me was, like, a brief comedy moment in the club room when they're talking about Machi and how, you know, oh, it looks like she tried to strangle her brother. There was some comedy sprinkled in with that, which I felt like was out of place. But besides that, like, small one-second moment, this episode was just so perfect for me and just made me appreciate Yuki and Machi so much. It was always one of those relationships that I had a very strong suspicion about where I was like, this could be one of the all-stars aspects about this story. And it's been a slow burn. It's been a long grind to get here, but it feels like there's probably still more, probably going to be a couple of cute moments or something like that, but it feels satisfying. It's one of those relationships where... You know, someone like her, she understands that a boy like Yuki, you know, he understands that people have these unrealistic expectations as well. He has to put on a fake smile, but she gets to see the true person behind the fakeness that a lot of the other people used to see. And he's there saying, you know, if you need to be messy, be messy. Your mental health is what matters. It's just an episode that went from being, okay, this is interesting and a little goofy to, holy shit, I did not see that coming. Bruce Basket is definitely concluding things in very satisfying ways. Um, despite this being a very large cast of characters, it feels like you naturally could wrap up this story for pretty much everyone in a satisfying way. I mean, yeah, the cliffhanger at the end of the episode was pretty damn shocking and Scissors got me a tad worried, but we'll be interesting to see, even if it scares the living shit out of me, where that's gonna go, especially with Akuto and all of them. I just think this is a great episode. It's been a great past few episodes, but really, has there been a bad episode of Fruits Basket? Absolutely not. Excited, a little terrified, but I mean, seriously, I don't know. Just There was something magical and sweet and depressing and just perfect about what we just saw with these two relationship, and if there's anything I need to more like ammo-wise to be like, okay, these two... I ship them. This did it for me, for sure. This is just so good. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on this pretty emotional episode. Did the relationship between these two get you like it did for me, or is there something else you're looking for? If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share your support, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you're happy new round here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.